In this video, we'll be completing a pH calculation for a weak acid. What is the pH of a 0.02 molar solution of acetic acid? Well, acetic acid is not one of your six strong acids, so it's a weak acid. Also, that's supported by the fact they give us a Ka value. So the very fact that there's a Ka it tells us that there's going to be an equilibrium. Let's start off by writing the reaction. Acetic acid looks like this, and it's going to be losing this proton here. And water is going to be functioning like a base, and it's actually going to accept that proton. So after acetic acid loses the proton, it looks like this. Proton's gone. And H2O, of course, when it gains a proton, becomes H3O. So we have a formula for pH. It's the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. So all we need to know is the concentration at equilibrium of this hydronium ion, and then we can plug it in right here and take the negative log, and that will be our final answer. However, remember that it's got to be the equilibrium concentration that we plug in, not any old concentration equilibrium concentrations. So let's set up an equilibrium expression. It's the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. And we can leave water out of the equation. So once we get this value, we'll simply plug it in and take the negative log. Now once again, it's not any old concentration. We can't just plug this number in. We need to plug in equilibrium concentrations. So that requires that we manufacture an ice table. So we have one reactant, that's this, and we have two products, that's these. So initially, we have 0.02 molar. And it looks like initially we don't have any concentrations of products. So if we start with zero, we would expect that the concentration of the products would increase and the concentration of the reactant would decrease. How much will it increase and decrease by? Well, the coefficients are one to one to one, so we'll just say they'll go up or down by x. So this should go down by x, and the two products should increase by a value of x. So at equilibrium, we should have 0.02 minus however much it went down by. And then at equilibrium, we should have x and x. So let's go ahead and plug um, the equilibrium values in to the equilibrium expression to get the equilibrium concentration. OK, there's our Ka. Plug in x and x for the numerator. And um, the denominator is this. Now it turns out that we might be able to neglect x in the denominator, and that will save us quite a bit of time. So let's go ahead and assume that we can neglect x in the denominator. Now this is only the case if this x, that is when we solve for this x, if this turns out to be less than 5% of the initial concentration of the reactants. So remember, brackets mean concentration. And this little sub-zero means initial concentration. So what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of x in the denominator. We'll just scratch it out. We'll rewrite it without the x in there. And then we'll solve for x. And if we solve for x, and it turns out to be less than 5% of the initial concentration, which is here, then it turns out it was OK to neglect x. And in all the problems we work this unit, um, it will be OK to neglect x. So let's just rewrite our equilibrium expression. Notice that x is missing from the denominator. Now the good news is, because we neglected x, we no longer need the quadratic formula. So solving for x is relatively simple. So at equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen ion equals 6 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. So was it OK to neglect x? 
Well, let's check. Is this value less than 5% of 0.02? So remember, this is the x that we just solved for. And is it less than 5% of our initial concentration of reactant? Let's do the math. Well, it turns out it's 3%, and 3% is less than 5%, so it was okay to neglect x. So we don't have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which we just calculated. So our final answer is a pH of 3.2.